This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Ops Genie. Your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are working with expressions in the shell script. Now this week, we are using our new knowledge of if statements to focus on testing them with expressions in a command called test in particular. Now first, we will work with file expressions. So for example, go ahead and go over to your computer and type in man test and see what happens. Okay, so we have the man page for test, which is a specific command. This will show you all the different expressions that you can use, whether you're working with integers or strings or files, four different things that you can type in with test, all these different expressions. Very, very good to memorize these in particular. Now, whenever you are working with test, it should return a zero if it works or a one if it doesn't. So each of those different options that I just showed you in the man page will allow you to test an expression in a different way. So for example, typing tac e test to see if a file exists, while tac r will check to see if it exists and it has readable permissions set for the current user. And then you have tac x, for example, which checks to see if a file is executable, etc., etc. There are a lot of different different expressions that we can work with. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this script that I've been running as an example on my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a file which I already created, it's called file expressions over in gedit, which is the one text editor that I've been using for all of these different shell scripts. So to open it, I'm using the same command I have been using, it's gedit with squiggly slash bin slash file expressions, hit enter. Now this example is a great one. It's from the Linux command line book, which I have suggested y'all check out multiple times on the channel. It's available online. I can link to it below again if you're interested. So this script is looking at the constant value, which is bash RC. So we are looking at this file in particular. Bash RC is one of my favorite files. It's awesome. Then it goes ahead and runs the following test. If it exists, which is the very first part, if this file is there, then it tests to see if it's a regular file. Then it tests to see if it's a directory, if it's readable, if it's writable, and if it's executable. We close out this if else part right here with phi, and then else echo file does not exist. So first we check to see if the file is there, then run through this if it does exist. Else, if it does not exist at all, then you skip all of those and you just go straight over to echo file does not exist, exit with one, file, and exit. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of there and I wanna show you my sysinfo file because I've copied this context over to my sysinfo file. So I went ahead and opened up my backup sysinfo file that I currently have been working in and I have turned this command into a shell function by changing the first line of the code and turning it into that function, ending it with return instead of exit, and then closing it with brackets. So what I mean by that is first we have test file up here, which turns it into a function. We have that open bracket right here. Then at the very end, we have return one instead of exit one and the closing bracket right there. Now, if I save this file as it is right now, and then I open it up in Firefox, Hit enter. Okay, so there is a whole bunch of information in here, but the one that we want to look at is this line right here. So we are looking at bash RC is a regular file, is readable, and is writable. Cool! So that totally worked. That's awesome. Now the next one is called string expression tests. These are very, very similar to the ones that I just showed you, which were the file expression tests. Now if you go back over to man test and hit enter, you will notice that there's a whole bunch of different options that you can do with springs. Now if you go back over to the man test uh, man page, then you will notice that there's a whole bunch of examples that you can actually use with string as well. So I've got another shell script that I created, and this one is called test, so I'll go ahead and open that one up. There we go. In this one, I am testing a constant string called answer that equals the string maybe. So it's always going to mean maybe. 
My test evaluates whether the string is zero characters in length with tag Z, and if so, it exits because it has nothing to work with. Obviously, it doesn't have anything there to work with, might as well exit. Then it moves on to check the answer. So is, is there something actually there in existence? If there is, it moves on to the next part. In this one, I am using a command called elif, E-L-I-F, which is short for else if, and that can allow you to add a lot more complexity to your statements. So in this case, we have there is no answer if nothing exists. If something does exist, first it checks to see if it says yes, and if it does, it answers with an echo, the answer is yes. If it says no, it echoes the answer is no. And if answer value is maybe, then the answer is maybe. Else, if one of these is not correct, if it says something else entirely up here, maybe it says like unicorns or something for the answer, then it would say the answer is unknown. And lastly, we have integers. So I will open up another script on here, which is simply called integers. And in here, you can see that I'm using the same kind of context. If else statements with the expression bracketed. And at the end, I test whether the integer is even or odd with an equation, like take the integer, divide by two, and then it returns the output. And all of the integer options are also listed in the man test page. So test is actually pretty cool, but there's a lot more to it, so we will be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. Incidents are inevitable. They can happen at any time and how your company responds matters. Dealing with incidents whenever they happen requires coordination between your ops and your software dev teams, who are honestly unsung heroes who put out fires every single day and they just do not get enough credit. So thank you. Ladies and guys out there who are putting out all those fires, we appreciate you. So getting alerts immediately is critical whenever an incident occurs. That's why there's Ops Genie by Atlassian. So Ops Genie empowers your team to plan for service disruptions and stay in control. It gives teams the power to respond quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues. And it helps to notify all the right people through a smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths that take into account things like time zones and, I don't know, Christmas holidays. Now, Ops Genie also allows for deep flexibility in how, when, and where alerts are deployed, and it's supported by over 200 integrations like Jira and Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, New Relic, a whole lot more. It tracks all the activity, it provides useful insights to improve future incident responses, and I gotta say, whenever you are running an online service for thousands or even just a few customers, they're gonna notice when something goes down and they're all going to call you or email you. And if your main op is on vacation, I don't know, spending the holidays with their family, for example, you don't wanna be the one trying to figure out how to solve the issue and get your customers back online. So Ops Genie will escalate that issue to the right person who is available. Your unsung heroes, for example, and they can solve the issue and your customers are happy, I'm happy, and that's great. Now with Ops Genie, your next incident does not stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up to get a free company account and add up to five team members. No credit card required, so you can totally try it out yourself. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert again with Ops Genie. We are now back and we are going to end it with a little bit more useful information. So to end today's episode with all of these different tests that we've been running, we can also use a modernized test for our expressions. So for this one, you would use the context double brackets with an expression in between. And this will output to either a true or a false answer. Now this is pretty similar to our previous findings, but adds a new expression that looks kind of like this. First, you would have string one with a space equals squiggly, I always call it squiggly, deal with it, space regex or regular expression. So string one needs to be matched with regex to output as true. So with the integer script, adding the following lines allows the script to test if the int value is actually an integer because the current one doesn't have an option to test that. So to walk you through this change, the if statement now tests whether int equals the regular expression. The regular expression is either a minus sign or no minus sign. It doesn't have to have a minus sign in front of the value for the integer, uh, plus the numbers right afterwards. So it's going to check to make sure that there is a minus sign right here or no minus sign, and then it checks to make sure that it is actually numbers there, not like an A or a B, a C or whatever. 
And that is it. And by the way, I also wanted to mention that if you have double brackets, uh, that context also supports the equals equals operator. So you can use it for path name expansion too, just like you do in the command line. Now stay tuned because coming up on Hack Tip, we will be finishing up the tutorials on if statements and we will finally fix that permissions issue that we had on our script. So until then, I wanna hear your feedback. What programs are you using? Comment below and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. Trust your technolust.